Welcome to the Model Health Show. This is fitness and nutrition expert Sean Stevenson here with my amazing, talented, gifted, beautiful co host and producer. Woo! <laughs> Jade Harrell. What's going on, Jade? What's going on, my friend, Sean? My friend. Yes. Friend to the end. To the end, my bestie. <laughs> How are you today? Well, today I am impact underful. Impact underful. Yes. What is that? <laughs> I am so wonderfully impacted by you and what we're oh, wow. doing. I know, hitting you back with it. And your birthday was yesterday, yeah. and I wanted to be sure that I took time to say thank you for the impact you have on our world. Oh, Jay, thank you so much. Mm -hmm. Well, guys, it wasn't <laughs> yesterday when you got this, but my oh, birthday sure, right. just passed. It was uh, August 23rd. <laughs> yeah. <so. laughs> right? Wouldn't that be nice if every day was your birthday? You know, you I got a lot of extra way. love, and I really mm -hmm. felt, I mean, there's literally well over a thousand messages yeah. and just want to thank everybody so much for that love i really felt it yesterday and silly you you were given we're like it's your birthday I man know, right <laughs> it's what i do it yeah. it's what i do you know I, I found that one of the greatest gifts in our life and the greatest feelings that we have i love giving yeah. i love giving away stuff mm -hmm. free stuff content mm -hmm. knowledge it just feels so mm -hmm. good and i think this is what we're all hardwired to do yeah. but it's first those are, you know, the kind of the needs of the spirit, you know, like Tony Robbins talks about. We've got to get right, our life structures kind of handled, you know, and feel good. And this is why we do what we do here with the Model Health Show as well. Absolutely. And wow, we've got incredible guests <laughs> to help you do that today on a whole mm -hmm. other level. Yeah. We're going to talk about chronotypes. Oh, you know what chronotypes are? I have no idea. Well, you're going to find idea. out today. What a chronotype All right, is. you got to get dialed into your unique chronotype. And this is something, it parallels really nicely with our approach, which mm -hmm. we've, you know, been practicing in my well over 10 years now, mm -hmm. specifically talking about metabolic types sure. and how we're all, we have this unique metabolism. But he's going, going on to another track here talking about how it's all lined up with the circadian timing. Oh, and it's wow. fascinating. Timing is perfect. Fascinating. Mm -hmm. Captain Fascinate, telling you. So <laughs> we're going to get to our special guest in just it. a moment. But first, let's give a quick oh, shout out to man. our show sponsor, onnit.com. Head over to onnit.com forward slash model for 10% off all of your health mm -hmm. and human performance supplements. I have to tell you yesterday, I got my swole on. Did all right. you? I was doing some fantastic videos there. If you're following me on Insta stories, yes, all right, on Instagram at Sean Model. Yeah. And also he did a little bit on Snapchat as well. Mm -hmm. And I was doing those Superman push ups. Mm -hmm. You know about mm -hmm. that? Mm -hmm. Basically, no. yeah, you, you do the push up <laughs> and then you, you fly, you get off the ground, your hands and <laughs> I yeah. have seen those. Yeah. I so thought I was those doing were a little for bit of that. Men. But I was showing <laughs> <laughs> showing some advanced and beginner uh, exercises to do that. I had Anne, my amazing wife, yes. was showing the the, the uh, beginner phases of that, and cool. then I was doing the more advanced and showing people how to do that. But I found yesterday really hit me because I've been experimenting with this for uh, for about a month and a half now. Okay. What do I feel best with personally for my pre workout? And there's so many different things. Yeah. But for me, it's protein powder mm -hmm. and Shroom Tech Sport. Right. Those are oh, the two man. things that I use totally before I work yeah. out. Yeah. And literally, when we finished. And she was walking to go stretch. I was like, I'm, I'm just getting started. Mm, you know, mm. those are the words it that came out of my up, mouth. Yeah. I felt like, and I just went ahead and did another 20 minutes of some cool stuff. Oh, man. So Amazing. if you're not using that Shroom Tech Sport, get on it based on Cordyceps Mushroom. Over 2,000 years of documented history, clinically proven to increase your stamina, sure, your endurance. Sure. And for beginners, I mean, really, maybe not even beginners. To take it to the next level, you will push past yeah. what you thought you were doing in the beginning. Yes. It's totally made a difference. Yes. Mm -hmm. Also, it improves your insulin sensitivity, yeah. which is wonderful. We want to make sure that's okay. operating properly. Mm -hmm. But most importantly, again, it's been used for such a long time, and it's a real food-based uh, supplement. Right. So, and, But then we also have the methylated form of B12, methylcobalamin in there as well, some green tea extract. It's dynamite. Wonderful. Real good stuff. Wonderful. All right. So yes. that hemp force protein, make sure to check those things out mm -hmm. at the least. This morning, my 10-year-old said, will you make the vanilla smoothie? Mm -hmm. And you know that's what the vanilla I see. Yes. That's the finicky guy, the one yeah. that doesn't eat anything. See? There I showed go. him how to make it himself in the Nutribullet. He's all set. So Kids love it too. order more. <laughs> perfect. Perfect spot for them. Oh, so yeah. on it.com, mm -hmm. O-N-N-I-T.com forward slash M-O-D-E-L for 10% off. Now let's get to the iTunes review of the week. So this one is very powerful, and it says here, five-star rating, I'm finally writing my five-star review. This show is an elixir and a friend to me. I first came across the show when I woke up one more, once more and realized I couldn't tolerate any longer how tired and foggy-headed I felt. 
My blood tests at the doctor's office always came out perfectly normal, but I knew how I was feeling was not normal and certainly not optimal. I had only listened to one podcast show ever in my life, but I knew I had enjoyed it, so I Googled podcast and fix my energy as the keyword. And well, episode 009 came up and it's been a love affair ever since. I'm super grateful and feel like in my busy and isolated life, I have a team that I can listen to, Sean and Jade, that will help me improve my life. My journey of improved well-being is just beginning, but I'm better than I was just six weeks ago. Thank you both for giving so much and addressing a broad spectrum of what constitutes our health. I wait anxiously every week for your next episode. One thing I'd be interested in learning more about is the process of grief and its relationship to our health. Wow. There are many events that result in, in a grief process, and I'd like to know, learn more about how to move through grief. Thank you again, and speak on. Yes, thank you so That's much for that. And girl. the recommendation is definitely received, and <sighs> special shout out to Google yeah. for helping you to find us. Yeah, right. You know, Thank you, Google. <laughs> right. And uh, everybody, thanks for leaving those reviews on iTunes. It means the world and to that us, and keep well, them thank coming. Thank you, we are on your team. Yes, indeed. That's now let's right. go ahead and get to our special yeah. guest. Today's guest is Michael J. Bruce, Ph.D., And he is a clinical psychologist and both a diplomat of the American Board of Sleep Medicine and a fellow of the American Academy of Sleep Medicine. He was one of the youngest people to have passed the board at age 31. So basically, he's Dookie Hauser, right? (laughs) And with a specialty in sleep disorders, is one of the only 163 psychologists in the world with his credentials and distinction. Dr. Bruce is on the clinical advisory board of the Dr. Oz Show and is a regular contributor to the show 30 plus times Dr. Bruce is the author of the book, The Power of When. Love this book. A groundbreaking biohacking book proving that there is a perfect time to do everything Mm -hmm. based on your hidden biological chronotype. Dr. Bruce gives the reader the exact perfect time to have sex, run, eat, eat a cheeseburger, he specifically (laughs) says, and ask your boss for a raise and much more. For over 14 years, Dr. Bruce has served as a sleep expert for, for WebMD, And among his numerous national media appearances, Dr. Bruce has been interviewed on CNN, Oprah, The View, Anderson Cooper, Rachel Ray, Fox and Friends, The Doctors, The CBS, Early Show, and The Today Show. And you can find out more about Dr. Bruce at thesleepdoctor.com. I'd like to welcome to the Model Health Show, my friend, Dr. Michael Bruce. How are you doing today, Michael? I am excellent. Thank you. That's a (laughs) heck of an introduction. I appreciate that. You did that. And you've done a lot of cool stuff. (laughs) You know, and it's just kind of evident. <laughs> mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So, you know, we've we've been talking for quite a while and I really love, you know, that we're on the same page with so many things. And I love and appreciate your work so much. But I have never asked you about your story. And I would love for you to share with me personally and, of mm-hmm. course, everybody else. What got you interested in health and wellness in the first place? So it was kind of an interesting journey. Um, and first of all, I really appreciate you, Sean, and you, Jay. This is an amazing opportunity for me to get the word out. So thank you both very much. And thank all the listeners out there for spending the time to listen. This is an awesome podcast. I've been listening to it as well, uh, and I get a ton out of it. So thank you all for, for all of that you're doing for everyone. Thank you. Um, sure. So in the midst of getting my Ph.D., Um, During that period of time when you're a clinical psychologist, you go on a residency or an internship. And um, I went to a a school where they actually had a specialty track and you could do one of many different things. Uh, One of them was sleep. Another was neuropsych testing. Some of it had to do with eating disorders, addiction, so on and so forth. And when I saw that there was a sleep track available, I had worked my way through graduate school working in the electrophysiology department. Mm -hmm. So I knew how to take apart all those machines, put them back together. Any signal that came out of the body, I could kind of identify it, capture it, and do kind of cool stuff with it. And so it was kind of an easy jump to go to sleep because all they do is they take all those machines and they put them into one place and they put them on you while you sleep and they monitor you while you sleep. So I thought to myself, this is going to be a piece of cake. I'm going to go right in. It's going to be no problem. I'm going to kill this thing, right? And um, and here's what I learned is by day three, I absolutely fell in love with clinical sleep medicine. You know, I, I have the unique opportunity where I can literally help somebody like that. 24 to 48 hours, I can change somebody's life. And that's a real gift. You know, that's not something that I take for granted. Um, I, you know, it's, it's one of those things that, you know, somebody up there, you know, up high, 
said, Michael, this is your calling. And uh, I feel like it chose me mm. because I just became attracted to the idea of helping people sleep. Plus, to be honest with you, it's kind of a cool topic anyway. Um, yeah. You know, it's so funny because if my wife and I would go to a cocktail party and somebody asks me what I do and I say I'm a sleep doctor, she just rolls her eyes and walks to the bar because <laughs> she knows exactly what's going to happen, right? I'm going to get hit with question after question after question. And I love it. Like It doesn't bother me to answer questions. I enjoy it. I have fun with it. And, and it's important because it's kind of rare to find people who've spent their entire career looking at sleep and sleep medicine. And, and it's been a wonderful journey for me. Yes, nice. and it's been a wonderful experience for so many people mm -hmm. who you've impacted. That's you know, cool. you're often considered America's sleep doctor, and so many people turn right. to you. Mm -hmm. And all of the content, and of course, I even quoted you in my book, Sleep Smarter, as well. Obviously, I had to, um, <laughs> but it's just such a such a wonderful and refreshing thing to see somebody to really tap into uh, something they're passionate about and to be able to communicate it. That's what I really love about you. And it's Thanks. seen in this book as well, which we'll talk about in just a moment. But I'm curious. I want to take a step back even further. All right? Sure. Prior to medical school, why <laughs> medicine? Why did you want to pursue a career in the whole health field? Well, <laughs> this is not going to be the answer that you expected. Those are the best ones. Uh, um, so um, all the really cute girls were in the pre-med psychology department. Okay, I'm clapping right now. <laughs> there you Let's go. get to the real, the uh -huh. truth, truth. Uh -huh. <laughs> so, you know, I just kind of went where the talent was <laughs> and um, it served me well. There you go. For there sure. you have it. That's the first right. the first doctor ever to uh -huh. know this is this happens all the time. <laughs> That's why I took French in right. uh, middle school. Like well, I was the only guy go. in the class and it literally served oh. me no purpose. <laughs> but shout out, bonjour, everybody. Oh, you know, all right. Just want to say uh, yeah. merci beaucoup. Okay. All right. <laughs> now, that's so, the coolest French in, ever. <laughs> in your new book, The Power of When, you say that we all have a biological chronotype. All right. Biological yep. chronotype. What does that mean? So actually, it's genetically predetermined. There's a gene that you have called the PER3 gene. And the length of that gene determines your sleep drive. Uh, it also determines some of the timing of your sleep. I want to step back for a second and, and explain to people how I got to the whole idea of writing a book about chronotypes, because I think that'll help bring the story one sure, step forward. Yeah, definitely. So I've been an actively practicing sleep specialist for the last 16 years. I've been my specialty is insomnia, treating people who have a difficult time falling asleep or staying asleep, waking up too early, that kind of stuff. Um, and and I've, I use evidence based techniques that have been for years, things like cognitive behavioral therapy. Um, I try not to use pharmaceuticals if at all possible. Um, we, do, we use a, a small amount of supplements, but not a ton, because I believe that most people have the ability to sleep. Um, they don't necessarily need a pill to help them sleep, especially on the pharmaceutical side. I'm not saying that I'm against pharmaceuticals for sleep, because I think there are certain situations that make perfect sense um, for my patients with major depression, bipolar disorder, schizophrenia, things like that. Absolutely. Um, medication can be extremely helpful in those situations, but not everybody is in those. And so I think generally speaking, there's a way to get this done without using drugs. Yeah. So I was doing this and all of a sudden within the last three to four years, several of my patients didn't respond to my therapy, which was rather odd because I have a crazy rate of getting people better. I mean, it's like 85% of the people that I see end up sleeping significantly better within four to five weeks, sometimes overnight. It just depends on what their situation is. Right. And, and so I was curious about that. So I started to interview the patients that it wasn't working on. And I said, help me understand what's going on here. And they said, well, Dr. Bruce, I don't have a hard time falling asleep and I don't have a hard time staying asleep. She said to me, I have a hard time sleeping at the right time. And I said, well, help me understand. What do you mean by that? And she said, well, I got to be up by 630 every morning because I got to help get the kids ready. I got to be at work by eight. Like I've got a whole series of things. And she said, and I, my body just doesn't want to go to bed before midnight. Hmm. And so all of a sudden what I find myself doing is I'm sleep deprived. I'm only getting six hours of sleep a night if I'm lucky. I'm exhausted all day. I'm cranky with my, with my husband and with my children. I'm not performing well at work. I, I just don't know what to do. And so I know that people who are shift workers, right, who work at night when we're all asleep, they can have this problem. Uh, military personnel, police, fire department, those kind of folks. Um, I know that that can have an effect, but that she didn't have a job like that. So I called up her boss and I said, I want to run an experiment. Would it be possible for us to have her um, go to bed late and come in to work late? I just want to see if she would be more productive. I have a feeling that her entire circadian rhythm is shifted. 
And, uh, and, and it's hard to shift something like that backwards. And he said, sure, why not? Let's give it a shot. So we did it for a week or so. And when I called him back, not only was she more productive at work, her husband said that they were getting along better. Her kids said that she was being nicer to them. Um, all, all these different things were happening just from moving the timing of her sleep. So I said, okay, there's something else that's going on here. So I wanted to investigate it and I, I tried to figure out why. So it turns out that you have this internal circadian rhythm called your chronotype. Now, many people out there might not know what a chronotype is, but actually everybody out there knows what it is. If anybody out there has ever heard of somebody being called an early bird or a night owl, guess what? Those are chronotypes. Um, it turns out, however, there's not just two, there's actually four different chronotypes. And in my studies uh, and looking through the literature, I was able to identify these four different chronotypes. So once I kind of figured out which bucket people fell into, my next question was, was what's going on internally during the circadian time? So it turns out that things like cortisol levels are rising and falling with a very particular schedule in a 24 hour time frame. Serotonin is up and down, epinephrine, norepinephrine, um, almost every chem neurochemical and hormone in your body rises and falls at a, at a very particular schedule and it's all based on what time you wake up. Yeah. Um, and that has a lot to do with your chronotype and what time you went to bed. So then I said, well, I wonder what would happen if I matched the hormonal distribution with kind of cool, fun things to do during the day. So the perfect example is sex. And people always want to ask me about that. And I know we're going to get to that even more later on in the show. But think about it like this. Whoever decided that we were all supposed to have sex at night before bed was not in touch with their chronotype, okay? Because think about what do you need, what are the hormones and the, and that you need in order to have good sex? You need testosterone, estrogen, progesterone, cortisol need to all be high, and melatonin, which is that sleep hormone, needs to be low. Sean, what happens at around 10, 30, 11 o'clock at night? That melatonin is shooting up big time. <laughs> Exactly. Melatonin is high and all of those other things, the testosterone, the estrogen, the progesterone, the cortisol is all low. Right. It turns out that there have been some studies done. The reason that people have sex at night is for convenience yes, and work schedules. Exactly. Right. That is the main reason. It has almost nothing to do with desire. It has almost nothing to do with that level of communication that people are looking for. And when I started to discover that, I said, there's got to be a better time. So I started to look around and sure enough, there is a better time when all of those things are actually elevated and melatonin is low. And guess what? It's around eight o'clock, nine o'clock, 10 o'clock in the morning. So one of the things that I detail in the book, and we'll go into even more detail in a little while, is this idea of when is the best time to do things. So then I started looking around at all the different things that I did during the day, and I listed out 50 or 60 different things. And then we started to look at what are the hormones uh, or the circadian rhythms that would be necessary to make sure that those things happen to their optimal potential. And we figured it out, and then we matched it up, and lo and behold, the power of when. Wow. So I know I see Jade over here <laughs> like it's brilliant. It makes, first of all, it makes so much sense. Yeah. And you start to see how <laughs> we've tried to conform our bodies to society. Right. Right. And mm -hmm. society exactly. is not const constructed in a way that is adhering or honoring our hormonal cycles, you know? So you just said it, it's out of convenience when we do a lot of things, not necessarily when we feel yeah. the most motivated to do so. And that's why I love the book so much because there's a lot of just aha moments like that, like I never thought of that right. makes perfect right. sense, right. you know? But also, <laughs> you know, we do you, for, okay, make sure to share where people can also go and take the quiz in just a moment. But I took the quiz, sure. of course, and there's these four chronotypes, which he's gonna tell you guys about in just a moment. And so yep. many of those things, it was scary. You know, it's kind of, I don't want to compare <laughs> this to a horoscope, okay? <laughs> to the horoscope, this, shout out to Miss Cleo, you know, right. I think, you know, but it's oh, not, it's no. not that. There's, so, there's solid science behind this. Wow. And it's one of those things where you, sure. you start to hear yourself and also my wife's chronotype as well. And it just mm -hmm. blew my mind. Right. It's like, right. how does he know this yeah. stuff is yeah. right? Yeah. So can you talk a little bit about the different chronotypes? Because you mentioned... You know, the um, the early bird, the night owl, but you're like, those are birds. We're not birds. We're mammals. So you brought forth right. these four chronotypes. Exactly. So awesome. talk a little bit about what those are. Sure, sure. So so I use the terms early bird and night owl just so that people can kind of be reminded of the idea. But, you know, as you said, Sean, I'm a I'm a mammal. 
uh, not a bird. And I wanted to pick other mammals that actually had similar chronotypes that I could ha have my patients identify with. So early birds are actually, I call them lions. Mm. And the reason that they're lions is, first of all, lions, um, their first kill is usually at dawn. They're up very early. Uh, they work in what's called a pride. And, um, and they're, they're kind of the, the instrumental go-getters, right? And so my lions, uh, if you take the quiz, and by the way, the quiz is for free at uh, www.thepowerofwhenquiz.com. You can take it there for free and you can get your little report and learn a lot about yourself. Um, lions are my COOs. These are the people that might not be the visionaries, although some of them are. These are the people, my get it done kind of people. These are my type A personalities, and they go from A to B to C to D, and they just get stuff done. They're great managers, they're important people, and, and they drive business in a lot of different ways. And then sometimes they drive their social world in different ways, too. These are the people that are planning the party or the fantasy football league, you know, or, or what have you, whatever it is that, they, that, that they're doing. Those are the early folks, the lions. The in-between are the bears. Now, by the way, lions make up about 15 to 20 percent of the population. Bears make up about 45 to 55 percent of the population. So they're the biggest group. And bears are the fabric of our community. They're the glue that keeps us all together. Bears are the fun people that you, you enjoy spending time with, whether it's socially or at work. The bear is the person that you go down and sit down at lunch with and say, hey man, what's going on? And they always have a fun story to tell you about what's going on in their lives or something educational or spiritual, or, or there's something going on with them that's, that you enjoy to spend their time with them. Um, they get a lot of stuff done. They may, they move forward in life. They, they're great at tasks and can get those things accomplished pretty easily. They have a tendency to um, wake up right somewhere between 6.45 and like 7, 7.30. Um, and then they have a tendency to go to bed, um, you know, closer to like 10 to 10.30, something like that. So they kind of wake up when the sun goes up and they start to really fall asleep after the sun has kind of come down. Night owls turn into wolves, and wolves are really interesting characters. These are, they're a little bit introverted, but these are my most creative people out there. These are my artists and my actors and my writers, my entrepreneurs, my visionaries. Um, these are the people that say, hey, I just get cranking around 10 o'clock at night. Um, you know, they want to stay up until midnight and they want to sleep until eight. That patient that I was talking about earlier that helped me learn all about this, she was a wolf. Um, and then there's a fourth category, which I call dolphins. Now, most people don't know it, but dolphins sleep unihemispherically, which means half of their brain is asleep while the other half is awake and looking for predators and swimming around. And I thought that was a great representation of people who, who have insomnia, trouble sleeping, things of that nature. These are highly intelligent people, but they, they have a tendency to get up, caught in their own way. Right. So these are people who are, are type A personalities, but also a little bit on the obsessive compulsive side. Um, they get bogged down in the details and sometimes they're not nearly as productive as they want to be. Uh, and, and those are the four different chronotypes. And so when you take the quiz at thepowerofwhenquiz.com, you actually fall into one of these four buckets. Right. And once you're in the bucket, then it gets really interesting because then we can match you up with all these different activities. So, so good. cool. So uh, I took the quiz and I came out to be, guess what, a lion. Of course. And uh, surprise, it was so, surprise, so fascinating. Surprise. And he knew before I even told him. And <laughs> um, what was so fascinating about it is that uh, we tend to be the early risers. And even if I if I go to bed at midnight or if I go to bed at 10 o'clock, I still have this drive. I wake up at 530. Mm -hmm. Like I just mm -hmm. I'm up, ready to go. It happened this morning, you right. know. Right. And yep. That's why I always try to cater my life and my structure to make sure that I am getting to bed earlier because I know that I'm going to be awake when that time rolls around. But you might be led to believe there's something wrong with you. Like, I, I don't know how to sleep late. It's not that. It's just you're kind of hardwired to wake up at that time. And That's exactly right. Wow. This sounds... is so – and, and uh, the big takeaway, and, of course, he's got a lot of research to back this up, but just the overarching understanding for everybody. So uh, we have this biological clock, this circadian timing – and this is yep. as real as the time on your wristwatch or your cell phone. It is how you're hardwired connected to all of nature. And this is controlled by your supratrasmatic, so your supratrasmatic nucleus. And this is something, it's got the coolest name ever, it but it's really. in your hypothalamus in your brain. So this is like the master regulator of your metabolism, 
of your mm-hmm. uh, desire to eat, your desire yep. for uh, for thirst, wow. you know, your energy levels. It's controlling a lot of things. It's those quote master gland, and so everybody's is a little bit different, but we can kind of be mm-hmm. put together in these four categories, and they are like so spot on. It's kind of scary. Yeah. So my wife. <laughs> find out she's a bear, oh, you know, perfect. and uh, perfect. So she has a higher what he calls. So we have sex drive and sleep drive. Oh boy. She has a high sleep drive. Yes, we do. She can sleep wow. anywhere, yeah. anytime. So yep. bears can do that as well. And he mentioned that. Uh-huh. But also just the timing, like just she wants to sleep just a little bit later. Mm-hmm. You know, she wants to right. stay up just a little bit later. Mm-hmm. And she's that kind of fun loving person. Like everything that you detailed, it was pretty, pretty spot on. And I just it's, it's amazing, man, how you put this together. I think that's incredible, Sean, that, and I wrote it down because I thought that was so valuable. Once you discovered, well, even before you discovered from the test, you catered, you said you cater your life and structure to fit who you are naturally and in nature. And that you w- tuned into your hardwiring. And, and I love that uh, Michael said, well, you must, they must not have been in touch with their right, <laughs> right. prototype. <laughs> yeah, I love that. Absolutely. It, it's fascinating. And once people sort of figure out what they are, it's kind of like, oh, my gosh, all mm-hmm. has been revealed. You know, I had I had one um, individual who I was talking with and he said that he used to feel guilty. So yeah. he's single and he would like he would go out on dates and he couldn't do dinner and a movie because he was a lion and he was used to going to bed around 930. <laughs> and if he picked somebody up right at for dinner at eight, and by 930, he was yawning. He could never make it through a movie. He was yawning. And he was like, oh, my gosh, my date's going to think that I think they're boring. If not, I'm exhausted, you know. And and he he was embarrassed yeah. to say, hey, would you would you rather go out? Could we go out earlier, like at 630, you know, because he thought, oh, I should be able to stay up late and I should be able to do things. You know, don't mess with my other nature, right? That's right? This is genetics. This is hardwired into you. I've got over 200 clinical studies, you know, to back this up. You really want to embrace your chronotype, and once you start following it, you will be shocked at how well things go for you. Well, it should one free the, us. One of the things, absolutely. Yeah. You know, absolutely. how many of us are fighting ourselves? We're, we're struggling through this because we're thinking it's supposed to be a certain way. We have to understand, though, we were talking about in the context of civilization, mm-hmm. you know, and right. uh, sometimes your life just might not fit for you to mm-hmm. adhere to that, but... He shares small insights on how you can create more of a perfect day for yourself. Just take on certain things, which we'll get back to in a moment. But I want to share one of these studies. So uh, in 2015, this is in his book, The Power of When. Definitely check it out. Pick up your copy. In 2015, researchers at Copenhagen University Hospital in Denmark treated 75 patients with major depression through the use of of either daily chronotherapy, which was bright light exposure and a consistent wake time, or exercise. 62% of the chronotherapy patients went into remission in six months, all right? Only 38% of the exercisers did. Oh, Fascinating. He's got a ton of studies like that in the book. But I'm curious, this is because this keeps on coming back up here about Mm -hmm. us limiting ourselves, being able to free ourselves. When did this go wrong? Yeah. When did this all, like, <laughs> how are we so disconnected from this? Okay, so so there's a couple of people we have to thank for that, um, that mess up of our chronotype. One of them turns out to be Thomas Edison. So um, with the invention of the light bulb, all bets were off because we could work at night and we could be up at night. Prior to that, we were an agrarian society. We would farm, till the fields, and get rise with the sun. And when the sun would set, there'd be candlelight. But eventually, we'd go to sleep fairly quickly. As soon as the light bulb came around, all bets were off. You could work late into the night. Kind of the Industrial Revolution had a lot to do with that. Um, the second big factor was um, our ability for transportation. So the ability to move from one um, place to another quickly turned out to have a really pretty major effect on us mm. because it could cause something called jet lag, right? Right. And all jet lag is is when you are in a place where your chronotype is not, right? And so, it, and jet yeah. lag, by the way, can have more of an effect on a lion in some cases than it can on a wolf in other cases. It just sort of depends on the direction of travel and, mm. and there's a couple of factors in there. So between rapid transportation and the light bulb, all of a sudden, we were all doing crazy different things. And and the good news here is that for bears, like your wife, um, the society is set up to do things primarily on a bear schedule. But that only makes up 55% of the population. There's another 45% of the population, which is a large chunk of people that they are way off in terms of their chronotype. 
The good news is, though, I'm telling I'm teaching bears a, a couple of tricks as, as well, even when to do certain things during the day, like when is your time to have what I call groggy greatness or brainstorming mm -hmm. versus time to be more analytical. There's actually times of the day that people will find that are more productive for them. Yes. You and you've got in each for each of the chronotypes. Uh, a daily schedule, mm -hmm. a recommended daily schedule. And you mentioned yes. that this isn't about being perfect. It's not about trying to follow this no. up to the T, but it's giving you a good no. look at what would feel best to you. And what and it's, what's so funny is I already do most of this stuff mm -hmm. in the way that you structured it. Mm -hmm. and Here's some of yours then. What do you do? Okay, Lion so let's man. take a look. And do you have to move? <laughs> um, you know, I always thought <laughs> the stork dropped me early on the way to the, to the ocean and oceanfront. <laughs> and left me in the mountains of Denver. But I wonder, <laughs> you know, as we do get away, is there probably an area or region that would be more appropriate or susceptible for our particular chronotype? Um, so in terms of like uh, parts of the country? You yeah, mean? world even. Oh, yeah. So what's interesting is, remember, chronotypes, at least in part, are controlled by light, mm -hmm. right? And so light exposure turns off the melatonin faucet in your brain. And that's that's kind of what we're part of what we're talking about, where, you know, the super chiasmatic nucleus and and looking at the pineal gland and all of that. And there are some parts of the country that don't get a lot of light. And so we know that people who are in those countries can actually have a lot of depression. We know that wolves in particular are night owls. Um, if they don't get a lot of really bright sunlight in the morning, it's really hard for them to kind of wake up and get going. And that can make them feel as though they're lazy. Um, their bosses or coworkers can think that they're not pulling their weight. Mm -hmm. They can become depressed, much easier to become depressed if you're a wolf than any other of the chronotypes. And a lot of that has to do with parts of the country and light exposure. You know, when you look at Seattle, Washington, as an example, right? You know, beautiful, beautiful part of the world, yeah. um, but you know, a lot of rain and not as much sunlight. And we know that a lot of people have depression there. So there are wow. places in the country that are absolutely affected by chronotype for sure. So amazing. So let's talk about some of the other things that you give mm -hmm. a perfect time for, essentially. Uh, sure. You talk about the best time to ask your boss for a raise. <laughs> and this yeah. is different between the different chronotypes. Why is that? Okay, so this is a fascinating study. There were actually several different studies that were done looking at this. And so this this has to do with two different rhythms, okay? One has to do with the happiness mood, which actually has a rhythm to it. The other has to do with how articulate a person can be, okay? So you wanna hit your boss when they are in the happiest mood available. So one thing you gotta try to figure out is what's your boss's chronotype. Um, now, you don't have to have them take the quiz necessarily, but if your boss is one of those people that gets there at 7.30 in the morning before everybody, they're a lion, I can guarantee it. And by the way, many bosses are lions. Um, if your boss is dragging in at 9.30, 10 o'clock in the morning, then they're probably a wolf. Um, if your boss has ever described to you that they have any sleep issues, then they might be a dolphin. Uh, otherwise, you can consider them a bear because they've got, you know, that's the, such a large percentage. So what's really interesting is if you look at happiness across the, a day of the week, it turns out, well, I'll ask you, Sean, what do you think is the happiest day of the week for most people? For most people, probably Friday. Exactly. That's exactly <laughs> right. Oh, see, I don't know. Were you reading ahead? In yeah. The <laughs> So Monday, it's task-oriented day, right? It's how to organize my schedule for the rest of the week. Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday, it's get it done days, right? But Friday, you've probably accomplished many of your tasks. You shouldn't have a whole lot of stress left in your life. And so Friday turns out to be one of the happiest days in an office. Then when you start to go down through the day, once you get past noon, everybody starts to get even happier. So later in the day on Friday turns out to be one of the best general times to hit somebody up for a big ask, whether it's a raise, um, whether it's a change, you know, vacation days, whatever it happens to be, that after lunch Friday period is the time when you're going to want to hit people up s simply because of their moods. Now, again, throughout the week, the stress is now off throughout the day. The stress is hopefully over and they're just waiting for the weekend. They're waiting for Friday happy hour. They're, they're ready to rock and roll. Now you got to worry about your chronotype, right? And so when are you going to be most articulate? When are you going to be able to plead your case and say, hey, boss, you know, I want to let you know how much I contribute to this company, how much I enjoy being here, and why I think it would be appropriate for us to discuss maybe increasing my compensation level. Boom, boom, boom. And you start and you have that confidence. You have that pride in yourself. Because if you walk in and you say, 
boss, you know, I'd really like a little bit more money. Um, yeah. That's not going to go very far, <laughs> you know, for mm -hmm. anybody. But when you're confident and you've got that self-esteem going, it works well for you. So lions are going to have that earlier in the day. So one of the best things that I tell my lion patients to do is if you're going to ask your boss for a raise, do it at lunch and do it right after your boss has eaten enough food to get inside their belly because you don't want somebody who's that word that's going around now hangry, right? They're hungry <laughs> and angry all at the same time. They're hangry. Don't talk to your boss when they're hungry. That's never going to be a good job. Go out to lunch with them. Make sure they've eaten half their sandwich or, or half their bowl of soup before you hit them up and then start Get in on them because you are at your peak. Your cortisol level is high. Your epinephrine is high. You get a little bit of blood sugar going in you, and boom, you can go for it right there. If you're a bear, you want to wait till just after lunch, probably around you know, 1, 1 1.30, 2 o'clock, because that's going to work really well for you in there. Again, you're going to be confident. You will have had um, your lunch. Your blood sugar will be high. You won't be, you shouldn't be too sleepy just yet. Some people, especially bears, have a tendency to get sleepy between 1 and 3 in the afternoon. Quick hint for you right before you go to talk to your boss, go outside, walk around the block, get some fresh air, get your blood flowing, and get that sunlight in, right? Because that sunlight is going to be helpful for you 9 times out of 10. If you're a wolf, believe it or not, wolves would be better taking their boss out to dinner on Friday night, mm. but that's probably not going to realistically work out too well. So what I tell my wolves is try to hit them before three o'clock. You might not be at your absolute maximum, but you should get a little adrenaline going, going in to talk to your boss again, go outside, get that sunlight, a little bit of fresh air, make sure to be hydrating all day, by the way, because that hydration level is also going to give you an energy level. And then for my dolphins, I tell my dolphins that they can do the same thing as a bear when it comes to asking their boss for a raise. But they really want to make sure that they're smooth in their delivery. Dolphins have a tendency to be fast talkers, very speedy people like bing, 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 bing. And, you know, a lot of bosses don't respond to that. So really take a step back, make sure you kind of zend out, mellow out, and then walk in with the confidence to know that you're a great part of this company and you want, to, you want some compensation to prove it. Fantastic. What a wonderful so the Model breakout. Health Show, not only health, but we're getting you raises. We're getting you raises. Right? <laughs> so I just want to say, I just want to say to everybody, you're welcome. Right, right. right. You're welcome in advance. So many And just wonderful. let us know. I love that. Uh, we can be cut in on the raise. <laughs> you know, it's all good. No, seriously, this is really fascinating yeah. stuff. And, oh, my gosh. You know, so many practical applications for that. Yeah. You know, generating new business, from us, increasing your sales, marketing your products. Oh, yeah. um, you know something? You mentioned the, the hangry thing. Yeah. I don't know if you saw this mm -hmm. in Sleep Smarter, uh, Michael, but tired and hungry all right so yep. i call it tungry all right so i mentioned this in <laughs> yeah. sleep smarter so being sleepy is going to uh -huh. drive your hunger your hunger motivation yeah. as well if you're up yeah. walking Absolutely. around and you Ooh, talk and about that in the book as well mm -hmm. with your chronotype about making sure that you you know bottom line is if you're up during the time that you probably shouldn't be you're going to have a greater incidence of eating so for a lot of people especially wolves yes. they're going to have that tendency mm -hmm. to probably be carry a little bit more weight can you talk about that a little bit yeah so i'm a wolf um, I'm happy to reveal my chronotype here on the show. I'm a wolf. My wife is a wolf, dolphin-ish, um, and both of my children are wolves. By the way, that's something else that's really interesting is children, um, at their chronotypes seem to be by age, uh, not necessarily differences by who they are, personality, until they get to be about 18 when it seems to form out. Yeah. But teenagers, and you all, I don't know if anybody out there has got teenagers, but you will know, I've got a 14-year-old and a 12-year-old, my my daughter's asleep right now and it's 10 30 in the morning over here you know like <laughs> wolf you know it's summer Fine still word, yeah. and that's what they that's what they want like that's how she does things she'll go to bed at midnight and she'll sleep until 10 same with my son um that's what they kind of want to do but when you're up when you're up late at night and you don't have a, a whole lot of energy or you're by yourself you know what happens you go straight to the fridge. Wolves do this uh, especially. Is they'll, I, you know, both my children do this, but I even do this sometimes. It'll be 10, 30, 11 o'clock at night when I have no business eating something and both of the doors are going to be open. I'm looking <laughs> in the freezer. I'm looking in the fridge. I'm like, hmm, what mm -hmm. looks good right about now? You yeah. know, mm -hmm. never a good sign. All right. Never. Right. That's really. And, and so America's sleep doctor is a wolf. Right. This is why, again, he knows so much mm -hmm. stuff is there's mm -hmm. definitely going to be more of a sampling to understand this. Right. And so what I'm seeing is so interesting is so, yeah, my, my son, my older son, he is 16 now at the point when this comes out, mm -hmm. his, his birthday will, will have passed. And it's starting to form for him. It's starting to sort out, I think, you know, he yeah. was definitely he could be a wolf for sure. 
But right. him and my uh, four-year-old, I just assumed that they were lions like me, you know. But no, they're just, <laughs> you know, the, right. yeah, my, my son, my younger son, he's operating. I'm assuming, like, kids are going to be a, maybe a little bit more lion-esque. I don't know. But he they tends are. to. Absolutely. Yeah, so. so there's a really cool section about when to talk to your children. <laughs> um, because, you know, when you're trying to get information, whether it's uh, from a spiritual sense, an emotional sense, or an academic sense, you got to hit kids when they're listening, when they have the ability to listen, right? And so you know, so you've got, you know, the big age difference. You've got a 16-year-old and a four-year-old. They operate very, very differently, right? Yes. And so as an example, with my teenagers, the best time for me to have an important conversation with them, 10 o'clock at night, mm -hmm. right? Wow. They're done with what they've been doing and they get downright talk chatty. I mean, <laughs> if I walk into my daughter's room at 10 o'clock at night after she's kind of been doing her thing and I'm like, Hey babe, what's going on? How was, you know, how was school today? Uh, she's participating in a, a lifeguarding program here in California. I'm like, how did guards go today? I mean, she'll talk my ear off for 45 minutes. Right. But if I turn to her when she comes home from guards, and I say, how is everything? She's like, fine. Right. <laughs> how did everything go? Fine. Yeah. Yeah. I'm like, oh, wow. have you eaten today? Yes. And I'm like, oh my gosh, what happened to my daughter? Right. Yeah. But if, if you hit the timing right, you'll be surprised. But the four year old is also interesting. So four years old, they are kind of lion esque still because they're they're. I don't know what time your son gets up, but does he get up real early in the yeah, morning? Yeah, he generally gets up on his own right in the six o'clock range somewhere. Yeah, exactly. See, now you being the lion daddy is perfect yeah because you can scoop him up and that's yep. good daddy that's, son time that right? is yep every day like that <laughs> you connect you bond and 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 you can really have some really interesting conversations mm -hmm. with them at that point in time now sometimes in the early early morning with my lions they're just go 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 especially kids they want to go play they want to play a game read a book do something like that so sometimes if you wait just till after breakfast for them when they've gotten some uh, some food in their belly right before that energy takes off again there's a lull of about 30 minutes right after they eat that's when you hit them with stuff like hey let's you know let's talk about what's going on in our family right now or let's talk about how you feel about this topic or that topic and you will be pleasantly surprised at how far you get with them that is you know so powerful. what you said about the teenager is yeah. it literally happened last night yeah. you know <laughs> i'm sitting there it's it's 10 o'clock and i'm about ready to close my book all right mm -hmm. i'm reading the power of win all right and i'm closing mm -hmm. my book here comes my son jordan plops down on the couch next to me dad oh my gosh that's and he's either. just like he's ready to he's ready yeah. to engage he's really ready to talk and i'm just like mm -hmm. oh what's going on man you know so yeah. But, you know, it's it's those moments and knowing these little insights of because I might have missed that back in the day, you know, exactly. and even prior to reading this, I kind of pride myself on being able to pay attention because just like, you know, uh, I'll talk to you tomorrow or whatever. But those are the moments. And it's it's so important because each day is so precious is, and valuable, you know, and this in. book is very helpful. And I starting to tune in mm -hmm. and see how we have these rhythms. You know, sometimes we might even think our yeah. partner is just uh, super irritable. when We want to talk to them. Chances are, you know, it could be the time that you're that you're doing so. Like my wife is locked in at a certain, and we kind of talked about this yeah, when she was on recently, yeah. uh, when she's doing, you know, working, and I'm more like I'm ready to to mm -hmm. to, to cuddle, like yeah. play. Hey, what are you doing? Like nudging up to her, you know. And she's like, right. get away from me, <laughs> right. you know. I'll right. talk to you later, you know. Mm -hmm. But mm -hmm. uh, it's just understanding that that that's a certain time that she just feels ready to work mm -hmm. or she feels. Right. Uh, also, of course, when we get hungry or hangry, like you mentioned earlier, you know, just mm -hmm. understanding these things can be powerful. And look how much yeah. of a difference that made in your relationship. Mm. When you came to that awareness and understanding how that improved your relationship, improved the entire energy and productivity and effectiveness of your home yes. and therefore on ongoing. And I see some of the struggles my eight-year-old wakes up, mommy, 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 I want to, I want to snuggle, and 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 I'm like, we gotta get out the door. And how many times right. when you say, I could have missed that? Imagine the time that we missed. It is precious time, but also we miss in their development by not having been able to nurture that because we missed that information. Yeah. If I gave right. him the extra five, ten minutes, imagine what his school day will look like. Mm, or if right. I didn't mm -hmm. say, look, stop talking, go to bed. Mm -hmm. Your bedtime's nine mm -hmm. o'clock. Mm -hmm. Or even look at the implications of them in school, in the hours of school, that we are forcing them against their nature yeah. to be right. in place. I was just going to say it's super interesting with, with younger kids. Um, when you look at ages like 5 to about like 10 or 11, it's actually even better to not do the face-to-face 
but to do so here. So one of the there was a great study that looked at children retaining information and they actually did a better job retaining information when the the person who was giving them information wasn't looking at them. So the be, one of the best things that you can do with your middle schooler is talk to them after school while you're driving them to an activity. Sweet. Right. So you, you give them a snack when they when you pick them up from school to give them some of that energy level back. And if they're going to sports or or studying, you know, at like a, a study thing or they're involved in, in whatever their activity, music, what what have you, while they're chewing down their snack and kind of chilling, it's a perfect time because you've got them enclosed. There's no real distractions going on and they're available and you not zooming in on them and talking to them face to face, it kind of gives them a little bit of distance and they can hear you. And it's amazing what you can get accomplished. Absolutely. Well, then question for the both of you. Is there mm-hmm. a, gr- a better kind of snack for <laughs> that particular time? Because I really want to score with my middle schoolers because mm-hmm. that's that funny time. Um, is yeah, there something sure. that works better at the, the when I pick them up for school from school as a snack mm-hmm. that would also help with the overall. Sure. I mean, I can tell you, I'd be interested in your response as well, Sean. My my response would be you want to look towards something that's got protein and fat in it and fewer carbohydrates in it um, because you really want the brain food going, right? You right. want the protein and the fat, which gets those connections clicking and gets them, you know, moving again. Carbohydrates really just are going to slow them down. I mean, I know they want to eat the goldfish and the Cheez-Its right. and all of those other things. And the juice um, box. Really, <laughs> right, exactly. You know, they, they should call those the sugar box. They shouldn't call them the right. juice box. You know, like you want to get them involved in something that is going to have much more of an energy impact on. I mean, one of the things my wife does is she might make like a green, small green smoothie at home and then have it in the car waiting. So when the kids get in, boom, they grab it and they go. And it's already a flavor that they like. And, and you know, they don't even realize it, but they're getting good nutrition right there. Love it. Yes. Love it. When I said juice box, I thought about the movie Kicking and Screaming with Will Ferrell. <laughs> yes. And he called Coach Mike Dit- Ditka, Super Bowl winning coach. His nickname was Juice Box. Right. You're just here to get the juice boxes. <laughs> so, yes, definitely. We're on the same page wow. with, with the snack. And mm-hmm. for sure. And he talks about ideal snack times, okay. you know, ideal foods. In the book as well, which is really fascinating. And, yeah. you know, I just wanted to say one thing to kind of piggyback on the, the conversation, which is once you become aware of some of these things, it puts you in a more powerful position. So my wife being more knowledgeable about my template, my cycles, she can take that time and be more aware. Even though she's into her thing, it's her lock in time to just give me a few minutes mm-hmm. of attention. Yeah. And then she can, you know, get right back onto what she's doing. And we have more rapport. Yeah. I'm more willing to support her. And same thing, because... I'm up crushing it. I used to have issues with her coming in and, quote, bothering me, you know, when I was crushing it, getting work done in the morning prior to having our youngest kid. Mm -hmm. All right. Because in the morning, I'm just like ready to to kill it, you know. And, you know, so we used to have issues with that. And that has changed because our mornings to now Mm -hmm. so grateful that they blended together, you know, which is really wonderful. But Mm -hmm. I want to talk about one other thing. And a lot of people ask me about this right, all the time. Mm -hmm. Uh, which is napping. All right. There's, there's a mm-hmm. napping sure. there's a napping strategy for each chronotype as well. So let's talk a little bit Absolutely. about that. So first of all, I'm a big fan of naps unless you're a dolphin. Okay. So if you're not a great sleeper at night and you have up and down sleep habits, don't nap because all that's going to do is make it even more difficult for you to sleep. But my lions and my bears and my wolves are definitely definitely good nappers. And if you just didn't have the time to get the amount of sleep that you need, nap is a great thing to do. Now, also let's talk about the amount of sleep that you need for a second, because it's different for everyone. Like I'm a six and a half to seven hour sleeper. My wife needs eight and a half to nine. That's just how she functions. That's how I function. There's nothing wrong with that. The eight hours is a myth. Okay. I don't want people to say, Oh my gosh, I got to get my eight. I got to get my eight. That's not true. Um, there, if I tried to lie in bed for eight hours, I would be miserable. I would be cranky <laughs> all day long. So know how much sleep you personally need. Number one, if you can't get that, a nap is a great supplement in order to do something like that. And here's a couple things you can do. So first of all, somewhere between one and three in the afternoon, your core body temperature drops by about a quarter of a degree centigrade. And that quarter of a degree centigrade 
actually is a signal for your brain to release melatonin during the day. And that's one of the reasons why you get sleepy between one and three in the afternoon. Now, we've seen this for hundreds of years in Latin American countries, right? It's called siesta, right? And so that's what a lot of people out there are doing is taking a nap based on this core body temperature dip. If you want a nap and you're a lion, a bear, or a wolf, then you can actually use that to your advantage. Um, lions would wanna be able to nap a little bit earlier, so like in the 12.30, um, 1-ish range, bears can nap anywhere between one and three, and wolves could nap a little bit later, somewhere between three and four. Again, just depending upon um, how much sleep you got the night before and what it is you're trying to accomplish during the day. Now, let's talk about how much or how long a nap should be. Um, you don't really want to nap more than about 25 minutes. And here's why is because has anybody out there napped and then felt worse after the nap <laughs> than when they started? You can't pull right? yourself out of right. it. Oh. Right, yeah. right. You're like <laughs> stuck in it. So that's because you went into stage three, four sleep, which is the deep sleep. And that makes it super difficult for people to be able to kind of get out of that. So you, you want to keep your nap to about 25 minutes or you want to do 90 minutes, a full sleep cycle, if you possibly can. Um, but, you know, not many people have an hour and a half during the day to nap. So I tell people, look, get into a safe place. Let somebody know that you're going to take a nap so somebody can check on you in a little while and make sure you're okay. Grab some eye shades, some earplugs, put an alarm on your phone and close your eyes. Relax for 25 minutes. Number one, even if you don't fall asleep, but you just kind of meditate and zen out and kind of relax, it's going to center you yeah. and allow you to move forward in a lot of different ways. So I, I, I recommend people doing this, you know, literally every day if they if they need to or if they can. Yes. You know, so sweet. again, it's so fascinating, you know, just seeing my wife has a bigger sleep drive. And so she she can nap anywhere, anytime, <laughs> and uh, it doesn't matter what day it is, work week, whatever. However, myself, and you mentioned this specifically in the book, lions rather be doing something productive, you know. Yep. And so I don't really have that drive to take a nap, you know. But whenever right. I do, which is kind of rare, and I just want to preface this with understanding. So both of us, and we haven't really specifically talked about this before, but we are so on the same page, and understanding that it's really about the efficiency of your sleep, not the number of hours, yes. all right? Correct. It's like, I've been saying this lately, it's, it's kind of this really interesting phenomenon where today so many people are aware of the fact that it's not the calories of the food that you're right. eating that's really changing your body and trying to modulate that, you know, because a, a, a 500 calories of broccoli is going to impact your body totally different than 500 calories of ding dongs mm -hmm. or zingers. All right. <laughs> exactly. So yeah. essentially what people are getting today is a lot of ding dong sleep. Mm -hmm. You know, it's the oh, quality absolutely. is suffering. I love that ding dong sleep. I'm yeah. going to use that yeah. one. The quantity totally. of sleep, right? The quantity of sleep is there. People are getting eight hours sleep and still feeling just mm -hmm. messed up because their quality. And that's where we focus. That's what Sleep Smart is about. That's what Dr. Bruce teaches as well. And so understand that first and foremost. So if you feel that really heavy, strong desire to nap during the day, you might have something going on with your sleep efficiency in the first place. Because for a lot of adults, we don't really have it structured in our life to be able to take naps. Mm -hmm. However, there are, of course, Huffington Post or Google, they've got sleep pods and things like that. But mm -hmm. yep. generally, it might not be something that can even work in your life. So you want to make sure you can feel better throughout the day. You just said it. A great thing still is to just take a few minutes in the afternoon, mm -hmm. do a little mm -hmm. meditation, do a little centering, maybe throw on you know your headphones and do uh, yep. some binaural beats or something just to get your body to, to fall in sync with that wave that's happening so you can come back and finish strong for the rest of your day. Nice. Uh, me and Ann called it disco naps. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so exactly. That binaural Actually, beats I, I think I call great. them disco naps in the, in the book. Oh, we're totally there. Totally there. <laughs> So, Dr. Bruce, this has been phenomenal, and there's a lot, a lot more that we could talk about, and I'm very, very excited about this, and to be able to see, I know you're going to do, you know, a bunch of media and more conversation. I'm, I'm just interested to see the impact this is going to have on culture, because you have that tendency to do that. So, is there any <laughs> last part that you want to talk about uh, in regards to the book before we close out? Sure. So one of the first things I would say is, you know, whether you buy the book or you don't buy the book, go take the quiz, 
Yeah. Right. Just learn what your chronotype is, because I give a really a full report to you there. It's completely free. You can check it out and you can learn a lot about who and what you are. If you want to learn the best time for sex or to, when to talk to your kids or, um, you know, ask your boss for a raise. I, be, I even go into health aspects like when's the best time to get a mammogram? When's the best time to take your medication? There's really interesting data now to show that actually when you talk about people with cancer and you and you look at the treatments like chemotherapy there's now even circadian rhythms to chemotherapy we now know if we deliver chemotherapy at a different part of your circadian cycle it's actually effective believe it or not like circadian rhythms are the cutting edge of medicine no question about it this is where we're going to start to see people moving and and if regular medicine can't figure it out then we're going to go on this whole holistic idea and we're going to just teach it to people and get them involved with it because the more you know about the your chronotype the better off you're really going to be love it that's so exciting cuz i i feel like this will be more of an impetus to bring us back to nature fantastic so well i've got one final that, question for yes. you yes Michael, mm -hmm. and Fire I'm interested away. to hear your answer. So what is the model that you're here to set for everyone with the way that you're living your life personally? So I would say the model is, for me, is listen to your chronotype, right? Listen to your body. Your body will tell you what you need to know. You know, a lot of, I have a lot of patients who go to a lot of different doctors and they tell them all kinds of things and they get super confused and they're not listening to their body. I would say that the model here is listen to your body. I know you you talk about this on your podcast all the time. It's in Sleep Smarter as well, which by the way, I, I endorse that book wholeheartedly. I love it. I would absolutely recommend people getting it and, and using the techniques in there because they're quite good. But listen to your body. The more you listen to your body, the more true to yourself you will be, whether that's physically, emotionally, spiritually, what have you, and you will lead a better life. Oh, I, love I guarantee it. You. Incredible answer. Thank you so much, Dr. Phenomenal. Bruce. So everybody, make sure, make sure to get your copy of The Power of Win. And you can go to thepowerofwin.com and also take the quiz. Yes. And that yep. is thepowerofwinquiz.com exactly. for free. And I did that as soon as he told me about it, I went and did it. And it's just <laughs> been so fascinating ever since. And it's literally, it's kind of become a part of my life. I reference these things with my, you know, with my bear wife and me <laughs> being a lion. And it's so interesting, the oh, conversations. But, yeah. but uh, it's definitely something to add to your overall health strategy and your knowledge base. Because what we're working to do here today is to be the model, to be the example, to be the walking, talking examples of what's possible. Mm -hmm. And the more that we not just know, but the more that we can gain this knowledge, but also apply it. And, and demonstrate and make it a part of who we are, the more it shines through and the more that we are leading by example. And that's truly the yep. way to lead. So everybody, thank you so much for tuning into the show today. I hope you got a lot of value out of this. Please know we've got some amazing, amazing shows coming up very soon. And I appreciate you so much. Take care. Have an amazing day. And I'll talk with you soon.